My guest today is Fernando da Silva. Fernando, how are you? I'm great, D David. Thanks, thanks for, for the invitation to be here today. Oh, thanks for joining me. I'm excited to talk to you because I know you're a cybersecurity expert. Yeah, yeah. We work with cybersecurity here, here at Microsoft, working uh, actually as a, an architect of cybersecurity. Uh, and uh, what's your role? Uh, yeah, I am a cybersecurity architect and I'm responsible for building solutions together with Microsoft partners in order to uh, provide, you know, uh, security strategies for companies in, in general, for customers, for, custo for, for, for customers and, and, and partners in general. Now, that's, that's cybersecurity is such a big, broad topic. Uh, how, do you, how do you narrow the focus down? How do you approach in a systematic way the problems that your partners have to address their cybersecurity issues? That's a great question. Um, you know, cybersecurity is, um, is, a, is, a, is a topic that is, is highlighted nowadays, right? We are facing a lot of uh, threats. The cyber cream uh, is increasing. You, you know, when, when we see the news, usually um, um, almost uh, every day we can see some notice related to cyber attacks, related to companies being uh, um, uh, um, facing some cybersecurity issues, right? And then it brings to cybersecurity teams a great responsibility in order to define the right strategies to avoid those risks, to detect those risks, those risks to protect the company device and the company uh, strategy in general, right? Uh, it's 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 related. Uh, cybersecurity nowadays are related to risks related to the business, right? So defining the right strategy here is a key point in order to keep the business running. So defining a good cybersecurity strategy is a key point to keep the business running. And as you mentioned, how can we, we define a strategy uh, uh, in order to, to define here the, the most important points or to set the attention needed to all the points related to cybersecurity. We have a bunch of frameworks available um, at, at the market in, in, in internet in general. We have a lot of, mm -hmm. of frameworks available that help us to define those strategies. One of them that um, I like very much is called NIST Cybersecurity Framework. NIST. Using this NIST, it, that's, that's, N -I -S -T. Yeah. that's the National Institute of Standards and Technology. That's great. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I looked that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that that's one great. So NIST uh, uh, created a cybersecurity framework that shares some recommendations and some pillars that should be addressed in order to define a good security strategy. Hmm. And on NIST, we start with um, identify. What means we need to know our environment, we need to know our device, we need to know our users, we need to define here the risks that we have for each device in our company, for example. We need to know our workloads, right? So defining a, a, a security strategy for a production server versus a test server uh, has different approaches, right? So sure. we need to know to, to 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 have knowledge to to identify here which one is important, which one are the most important uh, actives, the most important points that we have in our infrastructure. So this is the um, identify point in the NIST cybersecurity framework. That's the first then, pillar. Yeah, the first pillar is identify. So know our infrastructure, know our users. For example, have here a list of our VPs uh, with different strategies assigned to those ones because they are important ones that can, can bring risk, risk to the business if the account is compromised, for, for example. So once we identify our environment, once we know the main accounts, the main devices, then we can move to the second pillar. The second pillar here in the NIST cybersecurity framework is to um, let me just research it out. Is it, is it protect? Yeah, protect. That's great. I just for, 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 forget for a minute. It's protect. So after identify, we need to protect those devices, 
protect those users, define a strategy in, uh, in order to protect all the environment. You know, if you take in consideration an uh, uh, um, enterprise company, right? Uh, a business company with a business model, so on, we have we have some 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 strategies that we need to define to protect the environment in a physical perspective and also in a digital perspective. When you talk about security, uh, security can be applied to, to the physical context of the company, right? So have here the guards, have, have here the, the gates and all the stuff related to uh, uh, physical security. And also, of course, it's uh, very important to have the security defined for the digital context. So in the digital context, how, how we can protect our devices, how we can protect the core business of the company related to the digital stuff, right? So here we have opportunity to define the protection strategy, how we can protect our device, protect our, our, our users. If we will use, for example, um, a firewall, uh, if we will use an antivirus, an EDR, and a lot of technology that we have, but of course, not, not just technology, but here we need to focus in people, process, and technology working together to define those strategies for security in general. Uh, so I think we covered two, two, two pillars, right, David? Yeah, identity, identify and protect. Sounds identify. like two important ones. Yeah, two very important ones. We start on those ones, right? Identify, protect, and then we have the third one that is detect. And, you know, we have here, we, we know our environment, we are protecting our environment, but how can we detect if something got wrong? If, if one of my security controls are overlap, how can we, how can we identify, how can we detect threats in that context? You know, we have here our perimeter, but how can we detect if something gets in our perimeter, if something overlap our protection, uh, protocols, our if something invades our perimeter, right? So here are the point where we can establish some strategies in order to detect the threats. And this is a, a very important point because, you know, um, it's not about just having some security protecting our environment, but also monitoring our environment. So mm -hmm. in the detection, part, we have this strategy. We need to monitor our, our perimeter. We need to know our solution. We need to monitor the security solutions that are protecting our environment to confirm if something is not uh, uh, going out of control. Okay. Uh, detect, so that's, that's that's important. I, I know there have been incidents where there was some vulnerability that was exploited and it wasn't even discovered until months later. And so in the meantime, the bad guys are stealing data and wreaking havoc on a system. You can't, it's tough to do anything unless you know something bad is happening. Yeah, that's that's right. And David, I love to compare the security strategy with the physical, the physical security that I mentioned before. Hmm. So in our house, we need to first identify where is the most valuable um, um, things that we have, right? Mm -hmm. So take in consideration our, our, our house. I, I will take in consideration my house, for example. Well, the thing that, I, that, that, that has most value in my house is my family. So right. I know where my family is uh, when, when I, am, I am at my house. Um, Okay, I identified, I know where my stuff is, where my family is located. Okay, I have I have control on that. And then I need to protect. So in my house, I have I live in an apartment and I have my door, I have a lock in my door, right? In the in the in the building that I live, we have a lot of protection layers uh, in order to protect my environment. Mm. And then I have some cameras in my house, uh, in my in my building to monitor the perimeter, you know? So we are protecting, but we are also monitoring in order mm -hmm. to detect some threats. Okay. And let's say that, I don't know, a bad guy invaded uh, uh, my, 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 my building and well, they are inside. They, they invaded and, and I don't know, um, um, hack the gates, 
got access in my building mm -hmm. and my camera is 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 showing that we have someone that's not allowed that's not um is not a, a good person inside my my perimeter how should be the next step in your opinion ah, i think we need to respond to that th potential threat exactly exactly and how we can respond if we have just a camera for example how can that camera um do something nowadays we have some automation technology that allows to make a call when we have an alarm fire right make a call call the police call mm -hmm. the, the 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 building owner something like that right in this in the technology stuff we have the same capability when we have something detected then we can automate an action that okay. that is called in the security context uh, as SOAR, so security orchestration automatization automatization response. So this is the four the forty pillar pillar. We have now uh, identify, protect, detect, and then respond. Right. Okay. I think we are missing are... just one. <laughs> Which one are we missing? What's the last pillar? The last pillar is we cover. So we have five pillars. Identify, protect, detect, respond, and then recover. Let's let's take in let's let's imagine here that um, in our company context, someone was able to uh, compromise uh, a server, to steal data, and to run a ransomware, run a, a, a kind of malware that encrypts all the computers, all the data from that company. So, okay, we have all those pillars. We were not able to detect. We were not able to respond. We got an incident, and after got this incident, we were able to respond that, and then after it happens, we were able to uh, to um, uh, clean up our house, right? To 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 um, um, remove the malware, remove the bad actor that was were that was taking actions in our environment. Then we need to have the strategy defined in order to recover our environment, because you know sometimes we can't avoid that bad things happens, but we need to be prepared for when those things happens, right? Okay. It seems like uh, a lot of these, this this whole five pillars are in order, right? First we identify, and then we we plan to, how are we gonna protect those things that we've identified? And then how do we detect when somebody gets past our protections? And then how do we respond when they do get past it? And once they get past it and we've responded, what damage they did, how do we recover that they're in order? And it also seems to me that the further upstream we can solve the problem, the better off we're going to be. If we can protect to the point that nobody can actually get in, you it's know, much we have cheaper layers, response. Right. That this whole shift left principle, we talk about that a lot in software deployment, but in security, it also uh, it means uh, the, the more protection we have up front, the easier it will be to recover later on. Yes, we have layers here, right? It's like to compare in the in the physical security example that I I, I was sharing. It's like to compare with an insurance, right? We have an insurance for our house, for example. But do you like? Would you like to use that? No, I prefer to invest to avoid using my insurance. But the insurance is somehow a way to recover. Of course, sometimes it will not recover all the things but it's a strategy to recover in in cases where uh the the um, the bad things happens right okay now you mentioned people process and technology can you talk a little bit about some of the technology tools that you can use to implement these pillars great great point great great question yeah cybersecurity strategies are all about people process and technology so when we have people aware about security processes, people working to define security in process, we can have working process, in fact, like uh, how can I share when internal information in my company, why should I have an antivirus, an EDR, a security solution installed in my computer, that's part of the process. And then when we go to technology, we can, uh, use technology in order to ensure that those processes are being applied. And talking a little bit about Microsoft portfolio, we covers 
all those points that we mentioned with Microsoft technology. When it comes about security, we have a, 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 a family of solutions called Defenders, Microsoft Defender XDR, that covers in, in different aspects the, 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 the protection uh, pillar of NIST cybersecurity framework. So we have a Defender for Endpoint, a solution that protects our endpoint, our mobile device, our computer, it's a solution that protects the endpoint uh, context. We have also Defender for Identity, a solution that protects the user identity in that context. We have a lot of defenders, Defender for uh, SQL, Defender for Cloud, Defender for uh, Containers. We have a lot of defenders that has this, this goal, right, to protect. Mm -hmm. When it talks about detection and respond, we also have Microsoft Sentinel is a solution able to correlate a security events in order to detect threats and also give us tools to automate response. So based on the detections, we can define some automations to take actions like communication, send a mail, uh, send a message, or in some cases also um, security actions like block this user, uh, mm -hmm. isolate this endpoint. We can have this kind of, 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 of uh, instant response working with Microsoft Sentinel. And under Microsoft uh, portfolio in general, we also have solutions to identify our environment and to recover our environment. Okay. It seems like the Defender relies on some monitoring strategy first. That's the input, the trigger that says, oh, well, an event has occurred. An event occurs that is potentially a bad actor. Yeah, you know, we have uh, we have different layers here. We have different strategies for each layer. But um, once I have a, 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 a detection solution, it's not uh, eliminates the needs of a protection solution. So I need to protect the environment. I need to monitor the environment. I need to respond when I see something wrong happening. Uh, all those points has a, a great value and should be um, put it together, right? In our strategy, all those points should be part of the strategy. Okay, this is a good overview. I mean, we talked about these pillars for the uh, NIST cybersecurity framework, identify, protect, detect, respond, and recovery. We talked about some of the tools that you can use to implement those pillars. Uh, it, people, uh, but that's not enough. There's, where can people go for more information to learn more about this? Okay, great. Yeah, we have a lot of material uh, available in Microsoft official sites. We have material related to cybersecurity strategies. We have material available for all the solutions that I mentioned here. Uh, if you have opportunity, David, I can share some some links that, Please do. that guides I'll, to to. I will to put those, those in the show notes. Strategies, and then we can put in the show notes. That's great. Uh, is there anything that we haven't covered that you feel is vital for this topic? Yeah, you know, um, we cover a lot of cybersecurity topics, and when we talk about a cybersecurity role, it's usually uh, responsible to cover it all. And this cybersecurity professional has a lot of challenges in order to define all those strategies, in order to uh, configure all the controls that are needed. And sometimes, you know, the process, the people process and technology can be very, very large. We have, we can have a lot of technologies, we can have processes, and we can have a lot of people working together to make it happen. So that's why uh, in our side here, Microsoft is very uh, is worried about simplify the things. So when we talks about defenders, when we talks about Microsoft saying no, when we talks about Microsoft security strategy, we are trying to simplify the things. So in order to detect a threat, you need to receive some te 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 telemetry, some events from your your solutions, right? So. We are trying to facilitate all those integrations when we when 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 it comes to Microsoft security solutions. We are to, we are trying to integrate all the solutions here in order to build at the end of the day a strategy that in cybersecurity is called XDR, extended detection and response. So we are putting all the solutions together in order to build one single strategy, one single solution that covers 
different points at the end of the day having here an extended detection and response. What means we can detect and respond to incidents related to endpoints, to incidents related to identity, to incidents related to collaboration in the mail perspective, for example, and so on. So I just would like to, to share those points because, you know, I'm fascinating when I start talking about cybersecurity, oh, yeah. when I start talking with uh, cybersecurity professionals here, and we have a, a lot of top, uh, relevant topics here to discuss. Excellent. Well, Fernando, thank you so much for your time. This has been really educational. Great. Thank you again for this invitation. It's just a, a big pleasure for me to be here with you, with you, with all of you. Thank you. Technology can bring us closer to our friends, but it can also expose us to cyber threats. That's why we need we need to learn about cybersecurity.